Welcome to the Absurd Cinema Lounge, a place for cool cocktails and bizarre celluloid. So grab your cocktails and listen to your hosts, Kara and Tony, discuss this episode's cinematic epic, Burn Witch Burn. The lounge is now open. Hello and welcome to the Absurd Cinema Lounge. I'm your host, Tony, with... Kara, the other host. (laughs) (laughs) And where are we at now? We are in episode... Episode six. six, six. Oh my God. (laughs) Episode six, which today's movie is Burn Witch Burn from 1962. Otherwise, um, this movie was... um, Was it labeled or... They're also shown as um, Night of the Eagle. Yeah, they okay. had like an APA. Okay. Wait, we'll get into the trivia on that. I have a little bit of uh, info on that. Okay. But uh, but before we do all that, what have you been watching or doing? Well, I have to give you an update. Okay, so at the end of Sugar Hill, when we were talking about... Um, oh, that movie. Right? Pam Greer was in that movie yes. on Netflix. It's called Palms, and it has Diane Keaton... Rhea Perlman, like, how could I forget about her? And uh, Pam Greer is, and uh, a Jackie Weaver. They are seniors living, like, in a, uh, you know, I, they try to pretend like it's a senior, it's in Florida, a senior community, like they're still, you know, like 55 is old, you know, basically. It's like one of those senior centers, but they're very active and they start a cheerleading squad because um, they don't know it, but, Diane Keaton is she had driven there from New York after she found out she had cancer so it's a it's a sad story but also it's a good story it's not all sad but it's definitely something to check out just a I love mindless TVs and you know some some good shows like that mm-hmm. with you know some cool chicks other than that what have you been watching Kara uh you know I actually watched Son of the Bly oh I, I've seen that, but it's been a long time. Yeah, it's from like 1972. Yeah. It's like a comedy. Yes, you know, yes. It's almost like a, you know, like the same feeling of Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. Yeah. The type of thing, but it's it's really good. I think it's so much better than the original. Right, right. But uh, yeah, it was uh, directed by Larry Hagman. Oh, yeah, you got to love JR. Or yeah. Was it JR? Yeah, yeah. JR. Yeah. <laughs> so it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Oh, that's uh, awesome. So we, I, I put that on the list of uh, possible episodes. Okay. Um, So a little bit about Burn Witch Burn before we get into our cocktail, which will be the Witch's Brew. Witch's Brew, which I'm always up for a Witch's Brew. (laughs) Um, It's got pineapple in it. Yeah, so So I guess that's a good thing. (laughs) So on the heels of Sugar Hill with Voodoo, this one has a little bit of voodoo. But uh, this is an older school movie from the 62. Um, It's when a British professor, played by Peter Wingard, Right? Is that how you okay. mm-hmm. um, ties his success his success to his wife, who's played by Janet Blair, no relation to Selma or Linda Blair. Mm-hmm. Um, ties his success to his wife's black magic. Um, he destroys her voodoo kit. So, those were our, our main characters. So Peter, yeah, Peter Wingard. He's probably the one that's the most known in this film. Yeah. Uh, which his name's Norman in the show, yeah. which totally black and white. And some of the camera angles so remind me of Hitchcock. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, um, and his wife is played by Janet Blair, which mm-hmm. uh, Tansy is her I name. I like that name, Tansy. I did, too, when he he just kept screaming it. And it sounds very witchy, doesn't it? It does. Um, this was released April 25th, 1962 in the U.S., directed by Sidney Hares. Mm-hmm. Who, any information on that director? No. I I, I I have to give a props to the music because it was pretty cool in this. I think oh, yeah, it yeah. was very. Sus- that's how they did the suspense, which made me really think of Hitchcock. Uh-huh. You know, well the lighting was great too, and like the, the light, the cinematography, yes, was very very. Good. Um, and like the beach part when he's running around looking for her. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's William Alwyn, and um, 
it was adapted from the conjure wife which right. which makes sense because that's what it's about and i think um wasn't there like three different adaptations mm. from that book yes and i don't know if there's a uh, a modern movie i'm not surprised because this story could you know they yeah. always try to reinvent everything right. from yeah. you know redo it um very cool movie i believe um I thought it was uh, I thought it was good, but yeah. uh, more on our thoughts after we get this cocktail made. That's right. So yeah, we're gonna let announcer guy elaborate more in detail of what the plot is of this movie, and then uh, we'll be right back with our cocktail. In this episode, your gracious hosts discuss the 1962 occult film *Burn Witch Burn*. Nathan Taylor an acclaimed sociology professor, is a skeptic when it comes to witchcraft and matters of the occult. After he discovers his wife, Pansy, has been practicing witchcraft to protect them from a sinister force, Nathan orders his wife to destroy all of her charms and potions. As soon as her protective spells have been broken, all hell breaks loose. Have a cocktail. No, I don't care for money. I said have a cocktail. I guess he wants to have a cocktail. All right, so we are back with our cocktail. And um, kind of just made a classic witch's brew, although it's it looks a little different. It's actually blue. Little. It's blue. Yes. So it's kind of festive. I, I didn't really want to do a Halloween drink, but, you know, when you start doing witches and I mean, yeah. we're getting closer to that time of year. I mean, pumpkin is already available at Duncan. So. Oh, oh, gosh. <laughs> so, yeah. So, let me give the rundown of the um, ingredients of this drink. All right, so try it and let's see what you think. All right, here we go down the hatch. Uh-huh. <laughs> Is that a tick? That's a tick. I mean, it's good. It's not as boozy as um, a yellow that, bird. The yellow bird or the, lem, um, lemon. the lemon martini, lemon drop martini from Snowbird, Snowblood, yeah. Snowbird, Snowblood. <laughs> um, but it, it, it's good. It's good. I love the way it looks. Okay. Yeah. It's very pineapple-y. I like it. Yes. Like I said before, a lot of the juice, the acidity, acidity. Yeah. Acid, I can't really take anymore, but I enjoy it. Yeah. All right. That's awesome. Oh, so what do you think of it? I like it. Um, You know, it's got vodka in it. So vodka kind of masks. I mean, you can mix anything. With vodka, right. You know, but um, I could see if like maybe you wanted to do like less boozy maybe you could add some pineapple flavored water or something you know right to kind of cut the acid if that bothered you but yeah it's a very very pretty blue so i think uh they're like pretty drinks when i do my uh picture of this i will put spider in there because spiders are a big part of this movie you notice that yes Yes, I will. I remembered a few of those yeah, spiders uh-huh. in the movie. So, um, now have you ever heard of this movie before or seen it? Or never, never. Gosh, I'm with such a sheltered life. <laughs> I think I watched this many years ago. I think it was like on a TCM again because I love TCM. Okay. It was during Halloween, so they used to be playing some of these old movies. Yeah. You know, I will say when you Google this movie, a lot of good reviews come from it. Oh, yeah. A lot of people like this movie. It's really, really good. I I liked it a lot. uh, My husband seen it and he goes, oh, yeah, this was a pretty good one. You know, it it keeps you um, involved. And the music really, I mean, 
has to do with that. Yeah. Yeah. And so you can watch this uh, on Pluto. Yes. That's That's where we both watched it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I did see it is available Amazon and Vudu. Oh, it's it's on Vudu, yeah. Yeah. But uh, it's about an hour and a half. Kind of short. I mean, just because... It went by very quick. It went, yeah. I thought it was actually shorter than that. But, yeah. Um, definitely. It wasn't uh, too long, at least even for me. Right. So, like we said, we have our, our just our uh, our main characters. We have Norman Taylor. The, he's the sociology professor. We also have his wife, Tansy, like you said. And then we have um, this nasty woman named <laughs> Laura. Who is, like, the epitome of matronly dowdy yes like not the very nice lady and you could tell in the beginning that lady's not nice no she's not um she's she outright says she can't stand him. yes i mean in the first scene but i will say when okay so we have to say this because this part of the movie reminded me so much of plan nine or like a movie like that uh-huh. is in the beginning it's a black screen and you have this oh. voice Yes. Be prepared. You know, it's like kind of like yes. almost like one of those. I felt like we're going to theater and the seat was going to buzz us like a <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or so something. It's, it's a black screen and it's it's on there for like a minute. Yeah, and a half. I thought maybe this movie's not going to play. Right. <laughs> and um, it's just a black screen. And it's this man who who was Paul Freeze, which. OK. Did a lot of the voices um. In those old like shows, like the Burgermeister, oh um, my Mister, nice that that's type of stuff, <laughs> and also like a Speed Racer. Okay, so you, you know, Fractured Fairy Tales, things like that, and Goldwinkle. But uh, he's like warning you, like watch this if you dare, and things. Yeah, like and that. then he's like um, putting putting like a spell, yes, over the audience to be protected from all of <laughs> which the evil is kind that's of like happen. pretty cool because you know back then, right. People weren't, um, you know, as hip up on. You know, <laughs> they on, didn't have podcasts. For yeah, them. they couldn't get their info, you know, like <laughs> from uh, from people like us. Right. But uh, so I thought that was very clever um, beforehand. Mm-hmm. And then the movie starts. It's black and white, which totally cool. Mm-hmm. I mean, I thought it was fine. Uh, but is Norman Taylor and he's lecturing and he's at the chalkboard and he's like basically do not believe, you know, it's all about supernatural stuff and yes. how you know this isn't real it's it's a it's, psychological yes. thing yes you're hanging on to good luck charms it's a false yes ideal you know things like that and uh there's and then two, they, stu- two there's two students two. but they mainly focus on two yes a boy uh jennings mm-hmm. and the girl margaret margaret but they call her by her last like that might be a thing in the yeah. school but um, you could tell she's kind of one of these, I want to please the teacher. I almost like, I mean, you could tell she respects him, but then almost like, almost like she's in love with him. Right. Like right. the way she kind of acts. Like, I'll collect the papers and I know the answers. And, right. You know, and I. And Jennings is a jerk. Yes. And just, I think it's because, because they're like together. Yeah. It's like kind of like his girlfriend or yeah. he's claiming her. I mean, a guy with a black, I mean, or a dark color because it's black and white. Angora sweater. I don't think I would, you know, be dating. <laughs> I'm joking. I probably would date him. <laughs> you would want to take the sweater for yourself. Yeah, I'd say that's mine. <laughs> so you know, he's kind of, you know, they're, in, you know, kind of like I'm cool and right. You know, so he leaves. Uh, he tells him to hit the bricks and then <laughs> right, his right. class is over. Yeah. Yes, and, and uh, they leave. They leave, and then. Uh, he's outside and he's chatting it up with uh, this gentleman, um, which who's I, a teacher also. Yeah, I can't remember. He's and the old dowdy lady. He's his name's Laura. Harvey. Yes, yeah, so it's Harvey is is the husband of Flora. Flora also does she do anything at the school? She's got an office. I don't know even know what she does. She's a professor at something. Oh, sorry, Lindsay is Flora's husband. Oh, okay. Sorry, slash Lindsay. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so Lindsay. Yes. Harvey's a friend and a fellow teacher. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So they all play like bridge and they're going to. It's like all... couples. Yes. Because okay? then we have Flora and Lindsay mm-hmm. and then we have uh, Harvey and his wife, Evelyn. Yes. And it's just these three couples. The two couples, which is Evelyn, Harvey, 
Lindsay and Flora, and Flora get in a car, get in a car together, and she's talking mad shit. Yeah, she is. Uh, I, I don't like them. I don't like him. He, they think they're better than us, and you know that he's up for this promotion. He's not any better than you. Yeah, you know. And he's kind of like, whatever, I like them. Like, he's kind of like, I don't care about this yeah. promotion. I, you know, whatever. And she's driving, and it's England, obviously, because yeah. he's like, it's reversed, you know, yeah. they're driving. And uh, so they're on their way. So then we see um, he comes Norman up. is going home. Yes. And he tries the front door, doesn't have his key, so he gets the spare that's above his head, and we see, like, the bell. Oh, yes, the bell. Okay, they kind of focus on that. And uh, he opens the door, and he's like, Tansy, Tansy. <laughs> and they're a, a very loving couple. Yes. Like, they are very much in love. And she was, I, I want to say this, because obviously these were older couples, not like grandma, what we would perceive grandma. But these right. were older couples. They didn't Older have, than them. Yeah, older. And they didn't have um, children. No. But she was a very beautiful lady, too. Mm-hmm. And, you know. It's the typical 60s fashion. And yes. She had the shorter hair, but it was like a helmet. <laughs> like, uh-huh. I know how they did, but it was perfectly styled. And, yeah. Um, so they're talking and, you know, kissing and hello, how was your day type mm-hmm. of stuff. Right. So then they, you know, cut to their bridge game later that night. And that Flora is just nasty. I and mean, it was like so tense, that game. Like they were, they had these like special little tables set up for it and. They're just very, like, stiff. (laughs) Right. And there's, like, little, like, unspoken things between Flora and Pansy. Yes. Like, And you don't really know. Like, what? There's, like, tension somehow. Yes. And uh, nobody says anything. There's, like, smart little, I'll help you with whatever. And I'm guessing they're, I mean, I know they're friends or they're friendly because of the job. Because yes, they have because to. They're, they're colleagues, right? The but, husband and wife. you know, because in the real world, like, why would you even entertain these people? Right. You know, maybe the other couple because they were normal. Right. But why them? Or the even the husband was fine. It was her, maybe. Right. So then it's the end of the night. You know, they leave. Everybody's gone. And she's and, cleaning up. And she starts to freak out. Like, she is intensely looking for something. She's um fidgeting under the table, like, rubbing it, looking for something, and, like, under the chairs and everywhere. And he's just like, what, did you lose something? And she's like, "Uh, yeah, shopping list. Right. And she's looking at little little canisters, and he's like, you put the shopping list in there? No, I I, I don't know where it's at. So he goes upstairs, and he says, where's my pajama, my clean pajamas? Uh, Yeah. And And she's she's like. In the laundry, go get a clean pair. Yeah. Where's my pajamas is what she says, and he says. You know, where's my pajamas? And she said, in the laundry, get a clean pair. And I'm thinking, well, how long, how long do you wear pajamas? <laughs> like, do you wear, I've worn these for a week and now they're dirty. You I know, know, right? So then he comes down and she's all like frantically looking. And she's right before he gets there, she's spinning the lampshade. Yeah. And it has these tassels. And she spins it, spins it, spins it. It's a huge one. And then she finds like a, like it was tied. It like looks a, like a, a little person like a voodoo doll yeah. or something like a tiny one little tiny yeah just wrapped in threads thread and, yeah so she rips it off and then she gets in the ashtray because there's plenty of those oh yeah. oh boy yeah and they're a lot they're smokers you know so she and then he's like tansy and she's ripping it up and she sets fire to it and so and it like burns like yeah it, yeah and so uh and then she she's seems still a little, not yeah a little relieved but still worried about yeah, something she's still not 100 percent so, and he comes down. Now, he wasn't wearing a shirt. He did have a, I mean, he was. I was going to mention that. I was like, wow. I mean, even this black and white, I'm yeah. getting a little eye candy. Out of <laughs> so then. <laughs> I was going to say the same thing. So she goes upstairs and goes to bed. I'm thinking, right? Well, I think when he was looking for his pajamas, he found a mm. little canister. Sorry. Forgot about the. Yeah. Yes. He's, he sees. Well, he's um opening the drawer. He's like trying to rip this drawer out because it's stuck and she hears him that's right yeah and so then he finally gets that pushes the i'm gonna get graphic here pushes the crap down and then opens it up because you know that's my junk drawer (laughs) just like me at home you know so he finds a little canister and he opens it and it's a dead 
I don't even say it's a tarantula. It looked like no, a daddy long legs. It was a legs. big spider. It was a big old spider, but it's like kind of in this little jar in his in that drawer. Right. And um, he looks in her drawer, and there's one there too. So yeah, he's like, "What? What is this?" And she says, "Oh, it's just a charm for protection." Well, apparently they went to Jamaica. And she goes, I can't wait. I would love to be in Jamaica right now. Yeah. And he's like, it, talk about how bad it was. <laughs> but she learned from this witch, this guy, because I guess Nathan got sick there. Mm, yes. And so she went to him because that was what the locals were telling her. So she started learning from this guy and he got cured. And then they came to England. After. Yes. And uh, so all through the house, there's little things. Everywhere. She and she's trying to explain to him that these are all for protection. And so he kind of, okay, whatever. Like Protection from what? Yeah. And he doesn't really get the whole thing. He does. And, 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 you know, I kept thinking, like, it's not hurting anything. Right. It's all hidden. And, but he's he's this, you know, science -y medical mind. Yeah, and, so he's kind of like, get rid of it, yeah. whatever, and they go to bed. Because then the next day, he goes through the house, and he finds all the charms it's and puts lot. them out. Like, I mean, there's, like, tons of charms. Yeah. And puts them out on the tape. And, and so he wants her to destroy them. And she is freaking out, like, bad. Like, it's almost like this isn't just, like, something she does as a hobby. Like, right. she senses things. She, she must still she have has, a little bit more going on than just believing in. Yeah, she's intuitive. Like, yes. she has feelings. And she's, like, basically, like, she's trying to explain to him that there are things out there that are after you. And I'm trying to stop. Oh, no, he doesn't want to hear. It. And it's funny because when he was teaching at the school... They're talking about superstitions and things like that, how they're not real and you don't believe and you don't put any thought into them. Right. They're not. There's always a logical explanation. Right. So he gets her to destroy them, burn them up. And like she is just. She's a, distraught. Yeah. And he's pissed because of his belief, his skepticism. And right. she's pissed because, you know. He and doesn't then, like believe her. And especially when like he says, is that all of it? And she's just like, and then she has a locket that has oh. his picture. So he pulls the picture out of it and she's got, you know, probably some like leaves, something in there. And he goes to throw it away and his picture falls in the fire and she just like loses it. She's trying to reach in the fire. Yeah. To grab it. I gotta it. grab your picture. I gotta get the picture. Yeah. And he's just like, you're crazy. You know, talking about her neurosis and, you know, all this stuff like that. So finally, at, and it's like the second all of that stuff is destroyed, shit hits the fan. Yep. And she is like, like worried. She's wringing her hands, walking around the house, rubbing her face. Like she is scared of something. And then, so then the, the phone rings <laughs> and Nathan goes to the phone and tells her to go to bed. So he gets there and it's, it's a crank call so you think and it's it's the we know who it is uh, okay but the viewers you would kind of get an idea who it is but we're just going to pretend we don't know yeah so it's this woman on the phone and basically in not so many words she's basically saying i'm hot for you you're hot for me undress me with your eyes <laughs> and all this crazy stuff and he's like who is this and then he hangs up on it, on her, you know, and <laughs> yeah, and then he's just like, "What the heck?" And then Tansy goes, "What's going on?" And then nothing, that's nothing. So they go to bed. He goes to work the next day, and he has the worst day of work in his entire life because he almost gets hit by a car, <laughs> and old Flora, you know. That guy almost killed you. Yeah. And uh, and then she's like, oh, I got to run up. The dean is, is, has called me or whatever. I Let me go. pop up these stairs. Yeah. <laughs> so she shuffles. She's got a limp. Yeah. Does she walk with a cane? 
I never saw a cane. No, I just no, saw. She just limped. Because they just like zoomed in on her feet. Really. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. They go inside the, the school and. Oh, the horrible stuff happens. I know. It's Which like, nowadays this would be the end of your life. Like career. Oh, right. <laughs> so he is accused by his. Student, Young Margaret. Margaret. Um, that he raped her. Not just like had an affair. He raped her. Yeah. Not just like, oh, we were having an affair. Right. Like, <laughs> I think an affair would be better. Right? But before he went into the office with Flora and Margaret, oh, yes. Jennings uh, confronts him. Yes. And he says, well, I was with her last night and your name pops up and all of this stuff and He's like, what? So then he talks to her, and then she's like, you raped me. And he's like, well, I just talked to Jennings, and he said that you guys were together last night. So how could, you know. Right. And then she's just like, what'd she say? No, I can't allow any man to touch me because of you. It's like the yeah. story kept changing. It got getting weirder and weirder. Like, she's, I hate you. <laughs> yeah. And then she's like, I have to, like, I, I just had this urge to call you and say those things to you. And right. like. Oh, that's what I thought. Oh, yeah, he had urges. Mm -hmm. so, so she goes running, you know, crying and screaming, "I hate you!" And right, and Flora with her smarmy smirk on her face because she doesn't like him. Yeah, she wants her husband Lindsay to have the, the position. Right. Yeah. So it's storming really bad, and he's got to walk home in the rain. <laughs> Bad luck again. Bad luck again. And so he comes home and there Pansy's was a, there. Pansy's there. And then somebody delivers a package to him. And he's like, oh, this is my recording. No. First she's like, what's that package? Who, who's it from? He says, it doesn't say. Don't open it. Why? It, it, it's, it was sent to me, you know. So she's like freaking out, you know. So he opens it, and then he's, oh, it's it's my recording of one of my lectures that somebody from the school must have sent. And she goes, don't play that. Don't play that. And he's, of course, he thinks she's crazy. So it's like one of those reel-to-reel -reel type. Old school. Old school. Um, so he puts it on his little tape recorder thing or tape player <laughs> and starts listening to it. <laughs> yeah. And then it's got this weird noise that's in there. and. She's like losing her stuff, like, turn it off, turn it's it off. Like hurting her. Like yeah. you can hear like in her voice and she's just like And then flipping out. Something's at the door. At the same time, which was kind of freaky. It's scraping and it's trying to get in the front door. And he's like, I gotta go get the door. Somebody's at the door. And and he doesn't hear the sound. That's Does what he? I was I like, don't... is this like a dog whistle? Like, right. maybe she can only hear it. So she's like freaking out. And she's like, don't open the door. And yeah. And something's out there for real. Like, And I thought if I heard something knocking mm -hmm. and scraping and barking or whatever, I, you wouldn't open the door. So then she runs. And the, the whole time, she's trying to stop this uh, tape from playing. Yeah. Uh, knocking the table over, <laughs> you know, all this stuff. And finally, I think she turns it off. And. It's like, what has gotten into you? Why? What is your problem? And then um, the door blows open. Blows open, but nothing's there. Whatever was there, it coincided with the tape being turned off. Yes. So she's freaking out. She's just like, I got to, you know, get, you know, take care of this. I have to put a stop to this. Mm -hmm. So she devises this plan. She's going to. I don't know what you say, put a spell, cast a spell. Right. I didn't know exactly how to right, say how that. Right. What it would be to where she would take on all of those problems and die. Take his place and he would live. And he would live. So she mixes up a cocktail. Uh-huh. Well, first he go. you know, they're just kind of had dinner and drinks, I think. That's kind right. of. Right. And then, so she mixes up some and he's kind of like, oh, I'm so drunk. You know, yeah. she's like, here, drink this. He's like, okay. And oh, so, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And so she's like, actually like pouring it down in his mouth. And yeah. He's like, you're going to get me drunk, Pansy. And I'm like, he's already drunk. Right? I was like, oh gosh. And so she drinks the rest. Yeah. And then 
it's kind of a hard night. You could hear, you know, they show the floor like there's clothes and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and then they show the bed and he's like kind of like retching, like kind of wild all over the bed and sweaty. Shirtless again. Shirtless, you know, which <laughs> I you know, back then I have to think, you know, I wonder what people thought of that. Like, oh, because I don't you know, this was early sixties. Yeah. And I mean it was an English movie. Right. So what if they didn't like it? But you know, they're probably like, oh <laughs> <laughs> but uh he wake he wakes up and he's, you know, sweaty. You can tell he did not sleep no. well at all. It's like he's hungover. It's like really a huge bad. it's like the worst hangover you probably ever had in your yeah. life. And she's not there. So yeah, he I I don't know what possessed him to go, I'm gonna walk over here and turn on this tape recorder. Right. This tape player. And he turns it on and she had left him a message like this is goodbye. Yeah, I'm basically, you know, going to... She kind of says what she's up to, yes. basically. She I, tells him everything. I'm going to, you know, this uh, shore house, basically. And, yep. Um, they have a little cottage by the sea. I call it the shore house, like the Jersey Shore. <laughs> it's a situation. <laughs> I'm going down to the shore house, Snooky. <laughs> <laughs> Dork. Jim Tan Laundry. Okay. Oh, <laughs> so. She says, I'm going to go down there. I'm going to put an end to all of this. You're going to live, and I'm going to take on, you know, the yes. demons or whatever, and I'm going to die. So he's like, I can't have that. Right. So There's he goes no such crazy. thing. Yeah. Yeah. He starts driving to the shore house. And he has, like, a really cool, like, little sports car. No oh, he roof, does. You know? It's really cool. Like, Mach 5. <laughs> yeah, something like that, right? <laughs> and, um. He's racing along, and he's racing. racing, and he's all over. And I was cracking up because did you see like the sign? Like when it was like it wasn't detour, but it was like oh yes, yeah, yes. <laughs> what was it say? Um, what was it? It wasn't a detour sign. It said it started with a D though. Yeah, didn't it? it was like uh, oh, like good podcasters oh. we are. Um, <laughs> to what direction? It was like something about misdirection or something. Yeah, like and that. then like so. There's these cars like stopped. And so he goes around them, which I thought, where why didn't everybody else go around them? You know? So then he gets to the end and he has to back up. Yeah. Right. He's like trying to find a way. And uh so he's driving real fast. He comes along his bus. Uh-huh. And he goes up alongside of it and he's looking in the windows like at the people <laughs> trying to stay on the road. And he sees her and he's yelling, Tensy. Yeah. And she's like in a trance. Yeah, she's like kind of like passed out, but kind of awake. And yeah. he's just blaring the horn, you know, trying to get her attention. And he looks up, and there's a bus coming towards him, a truck coming a truck, towards him. Yeah. And it runs him off the road. So, yeah, so the, the drivers of wakes the, up to a truck. shiny silver necklace in his face. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, and they're like, oh, you know, we got to get you to a doctor. And he's like, I need to hire a car. And, yeah, like, I, the guy said, I was packing up. You're okay on the outside, but you may have those internal injuries. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, I need a car. I need to get out of here. And so he finds he, one. He does. gets Because then it's later at night. Yeah. I'm thinking, I don't know how long he was like passed out right. or, you know, crashed or whatever. So he makes it to the cottage. He makes it to the storehouse. And, uh. What was kind of cool, this is when it was, you could tell it was night, but the black and white was bright enough to where you could see. Oh, yeah. You know? So he's all searching around. He's looking all through the house and doesn't see her. The back door's open. So he goes down the back door. Now that goes down to the beach, but there's like, it's not an easy walk to the beach. No. You're going over rocks, and that's where the music picks up. Like, he's looking for her. You know, it's all suspense. Yeah. And he's yelling her name like, 500 times and he finally makes it down to the beach mm -hmm. and you kind of see her propped up but, up he, could, but he couldn't see her she was like sitting behind a rock yeah in a trance still and so he's still i mean man he walked and walked forever and you know or climbed i should say uh -huh. and then he gets up and he gets to the house it's, a, it's like a of some a sort. mausoleum or something. Yeah, it's some sort of thing. I know. don't know where the graveyard came in by the beach, but right. I thought, wow, that's a place to be buried. <laughs> so he's like in this mausoleum, and he has, um, he had grabbed some <laughs> candles from the house. Remember? Yes, yes. And kept them in his pocket. 
Um, just in case. Well, and the he's... shore house probably didn't have like electricity. Right. But they're they're small candles. And my husband says, <laughs> did he bring his birthday candles? Because <laughs> that's not. what they look like. Yeah. With birthday candles. That's funny. I was cracking up. <laughs> but he he's like, I don't know. It's maybe he's believing something. He's kind of starting praying. to like. He's yeah, like, like, I don't know. He yeah. Puts all the candles around her picture or something, because he had found a um a black magic book. Remember? That's true. He did find that, that, and he found a page that she had marked and written, and wrote some things on there, and he had it with him. So I don't know. He's like on the verge of a, being a believer. It's kind of like all hope is gone. So I right. guess I should just do this, and if it didn't work, at least I tried everything. Right. So then she appears at the door. Because he does a little bit of this. He's putting, I, think yeah. that, I think he called her there somehow. Yes. And so then she appears. And then but she's still in this trance. So he takes her to this doctor. And her hair's all wet. Yeah. She was like in the ocean. Yeah. Um, so he takes her to the doctor. And the doctor's like, um, you know, this is like critical. You you know. Yeah. And. And she's at home. Right? I, or at the cottage. Some, yeah. yeah. Well, he starts to tell the doctor some of this information about why she's like this because he doesn't know what else to do. And she kind of comes out of her trance somewhat just to say, don't tell. Don't tell. Yeah. Anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then she said that she wants to go home. So, He's like, all right, I'm taking her. The doctor's like, no, this is yeah, critical. Yeah, it's critical. This she could be, you know, dying or something. He's like, I'm taking her home. So they go back to the regular house, not the shore house. Right. And <laughs> she finally comes out of the trance. Which I thought it was funny because only I I mean, maybe you thought it was too. But then her hair is back to that perfect helmet. <laughs> like, like, did he go get her hair done? <laughs> <laughs> or did somebody come to the house? <laughs> Maybe. He's just like, you can't be looking like this, Candy. <laughs> you wouldn't like this when you wake up. Right. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, so yeah. So, then um, she wakes up. And you think she's okay. And, you know, but they go back to bed. Or, no, she she's back to bed. He's sleeping in a chair. She wakes up. And she shuffles downstairs, grabs a knife, grabs a knife, and goes back upstairs. And then she's going to attack him with the knife. But she's she has a spell cast upon her. But as she's coming toward him with the knife, because he's awake now, she's limping. Like a familiar foe. Yes. And so he's staring at her. Her legs. <laughs> and, Why are they all gippy? I know. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> so, um, so yeah. So he, um, that looks so familiar. Yeah, those so, gippy legs. <laughs> <laughs> the walk or whatever. So he gets her back to bed. He hides the knife. Yeah, he throws it in the ottoman. He lifts yeah. up the ottoman and throws it in there. He closes it. I know, right? Yeah, that's safe. <laughs> so. He runs back to the school, to the college. Because it's familiar. Yes. So he runs back, and he's in that Laura's office. And he starts doing some detective work. And, and he's he, start- going through her desk drawers. Yeah. And he finds pictures of them. Of Tansy and himself. Yes. Like, kind of cut out, like you would for a scrapbook. Um, and then all these other little... Meanwhile, they show they cut to, like, the staircase of the school. And you see the gimpy legs <laughs> shuffling up the stairs with those old, like, shoes, those big black cod hoppers. Uh, cod hoppers. With their pantyhose. <laughs> and so you're like, oh, here comes Gimpy. Oh, my and gosh. Then, <laughs> oh, God, that's so bad. Okay. And well, she's she coming up she's the stairs. She's an st- evil person. She's bad. Okay, yeah. so that's why I'll, I'll say that. So she's walking up the stair, or up as fast as she can, but... He starts to see these things, and he then he hears her coming. Right. So he hides. Yeah. And so he hides just in the shadows of the room, and she's she's there, and she's noticing 
some of her stuff is missing. Yeah, she opens it up and she's putting stuff like she's taking all the contents of the drawer and putting them on top of yeah. the desk. And she notices things are, and so she's looking in. He goes, are you, and so he now knows what's going on. Yeah. And he says, are you looking for this? And it shows the pictures. And yeah, she's so. like, oh, I just, and then she shoves all that crap back in that drawer and shoves it. Like she just scoops it up and like, I'm not doing anything. Right. <laughs> she's like, oh, what are you talking about? I just came up here to get some papers. Right. <laughs> the lighting in this scene was really good. Yes. Because they did this whole um, underlighting of her. Yes. So that makes her look more menacing. Isn't that crazy how yeah. black and white, I mean, just the things that they did, oh, their yeah. techniques were color, you wouldn't have gotten that. Not as good as that. No. Yeah. And so she's like trying to convince him, you know, and then. Then s- she starts kind of being a little more nasty. Yeah. And then, you know, I think she realizes he's not buying this. Right. <laughs> So then um, she sits down and she goes, are you still a, you know, non-believer of things? And he's like, yeah, you know, you're, you're crazy. And uh, she starts does building she a the, house with well, tarot does cards. Does she play the tape? She did play first? The, she did play the tape first. Yes. Okay. I, I thought that was first, not second. Okay. Yes. Because. And it's that same kind of tape that he played with well, the screeching. Yeah, he, pl- he played it first, remember? Yes. And then to get a reaction from her. And then saw her reaction. She and then freaked out. Freaked out, turned it off. And then she starts shuffling those cards. Yeah. So okay. then she's got the tarot cards. And then she starts building a little card house out of these tarot cards. And he's like, what are you doing? She goes, nothing. Just an old woman, silly woman, building, you know, yeah, playing old, with cards. Right. And then... She holds up this one card and she goes, this is meant to represent candy. She puts it on top of the card. She sets it on fire. It's like a woman? Yeah. He's looking at her like, what? And she goes, I don't know. Is your house burning with candy in it? You know. so Like, oh, you don't believe. So it's not, is it really burning? Right. Right. So at this point, he's nervous, but he's still trying to, you know, hold it together like you're crazy. And so then, just like her reactions and what she says. He's like, I got to get out of here. Yeah. So he starts leaving. He's running faster than you've ever seen anybody run. And she turns on the tape. And she puts it where it's playing outside. It's super loud. Super loud outside. Like broadcast. And he starts freaking out. And he he's running through the the campus yes yeah he's trying to get out of there to go home now i'm guessing he probably his house was probably within like a mile yes. of the campus yes so he's looking up at those menacing because they look menacing because they kind of look this is like what gargoyles would be but they're eagles. eagles and every time you've seen anything with this college they always focus on the eagle yes all the time so he's kind of i mean there's really nobody around um she's playing the super loud Keeps looking up at the eagles. He passes by um, her husband, yes. Lindsay, mm-hmm. and he's like, "What? What's going on?" But like, because he's kind of like, "Hey!" And he's like, just out of his mind, running, yeah. screaming. So, Lindsay obviously goes back into the college to where the wife was, but then he's screaming, and then you see a real eagle. Yes, and it's big, and it's big, and it's swooping him. Yes, and you can see. I'll just point it out. Yes. Which, I wasn't looking for any crazy bloopers, but you could see the wires. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, this was a, I thought it was a good movie, so I, I know. we won't pay attention to that. <laughs> so it comes down swooping him, and he's, like, laying on the ground. Right. And so then he, um, and, and a little trivia, background trivia, they, they hung meat on his back, so the, the eagle oh would my swoop God. down. <laughs> a real eagle. Yeah. Um, of course, the way the camera plays, it's, it's huge. Yes. I mean, it's just huge. to have it come down and uh-huh. those talons. So he's running and he runs back into the college to get away from it. And it comes in there and it's chasing him in there. <laughs> like it breaks through the door and it's running through the, you know, the <laughs> hallway. Like if, if you can imagine those two little eagle legs. <laughs> <laughs> so then he goes back, he goes into his own classroom. And he's hiding from it. Um, 
and then he hears the noises and everything and he's freaking out and he stands up and he backs up against the the blackboard because mm-hmm. on this blackboard he had his whole lecture on there about i don't don't believe, believe. yeah well he backs up on there and then he rubs that don't off yes. on his back when he was which like, was so kind of i don't know i thought that was a kind of cool thing. yeah so he doesn't know he did it. So, and it must be right there in that, because remember his classroom was all glass. Yes. Like, so it's right outside there. And he like cowers in the corner and his jacket is all ripped up. And then we cut over to Flora and Lindsay comes in and he's like, what are you doing? Are you playing this? This Because that music or that that tape with goes, the screeching was playing out. Yeah. yeah. But he must not hear the screeching either. I don't understand right. that. I, I'm guessing maybe these non-believers don't. Unless, maybe. because, especially with this, I'm sure she had some sort of spell on her husband. Oh, uh, yeah. Because who would want to marry that? Right, yeah. But, you know, spell on him and he didn't hear any of that. Something like that. But, yeah, so then. um, He goes over to the tape recorder. Yeah, he says, turns it off. you've got a broadcasting outside. So he turns it inside. And she just like, ah, starts freaking out. And she runs over there and she turns it off. And so now our eagle is gone. So he stands up, but he doesn't, his jacket's not cut anymore. So this is like a whole mind, mind F. thing. <laughs> so he slowly makes it out of the, the school because he's still freaked out, of course. Right. I but mean, he's, more, his mind is yeah. in shambles. So he leaves the campus and then once he gets outside the campus he you know he turns and he looks up and the eagle at the statue yeah it's stone it's back on the top of the college so then he runs home to um the house it's burning it's on fire it's um, like full blaze and he's like i gotta get in there and they're like no you can't go in there it's on fire but then tansy's alive yes they, somebody got her out so then we cut to Flora Lindsay and, and Lindsay. Flora. And they're just walking outside. Of the campus. Of the campus. And she has that tape and she's winding it up. And he's like, well, I think the dean is, you know, still going to go with Norman. Norman. She says, I think he'll change his mind. He's like, what? You know, so they, they're going back into the college, back into the school. He's He walks up the steps and he's underneath the alcove, going to the front main door. And she's walking, and then the eagle statue falls and crushes her. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and he's left there going, Oh, Flora. Right. And so. You were just an evil person. She was a bad lady. You oh, treated she, me like crap. <laughs> she was a nasty lady. But that was Burn Witch Burn. Yes, which. Which. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fast movie. That's why I said I didn't it believe kept it. kept her it attention. Was, yeah, it was an hour and a half. Um. It definitely had suspense, which reminded me of like Rear Window and Psycho and, you know, movies like that. That's why I said it had some camera angles were reminiscent mm-hmm. of Hitchcock movies. But I really, I really enjoyed this. Yeah. I would watch this again. There'd be another good like Halloween movie. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um, you know, especially an older movie to have a, some sort of voodoo type theme mm-hmm. to it. Uh, definitely. I thought this was, I, I thought it was good. It was good. And that yeah. drink. That drink was good, so, you <laughs> know. So, yeah. Uh, would you recommend it for anybody? I would recommend it, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, especially, like we were saying, you know, uh, Halloween. Uh, it's an easy movie to follow. You don't really need to know a, b- a backstory or you can't understand them or whatever. It was very easy to understand. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and I'll say that I like this movie because, but set in a time frame where, you know, women were supposed to be making their husbands martinis. <laughs> right. When they came home, you know, things like that. But we did have two, like, strong women. Yes. Another movie with strong women. Yes. And they, the husband was not listening to his wife. Like, right. That whole, like, you're, you know, crazy. You can't think for yourself or whatever. And she's the one who has all the knowledge. Well, she's actually the one. I mean, we know. Women, especially then, were probably the backbone of the family. Right. But in this movie, it was like, I say it doesn't exist, so you should follow that, too. Right. He learned a hard lesson. <laughs> I was hoping um, 
what would be even better would to be have a witch off between Tansy and See, Flora. See, I thought maybe at the end, like, he got to the house and then the wife was already, like, out yes. and she was, like, doing some stuff. And, yes. Yeah. But it didn't happen, but I'm sure there are, you know, reasons why. Yes. There are some movies that I, I do want to put on our list that have witch offs. <laughs> That's what I'm calling them. A witch offs. <laughs> so, yeah, there's a couple. I'll have to talk to you about that. Okay. Um, I would recommend this as well. Yes. It's really, really good. The acting and like uh, the cinematography, it just pulls everything together. And yeah, it keeps definitely. You interested, just like you said. It was well um, directed, well mm-hmm. written. Definitely. So, it was called. Night of the Eagle. Which that would make sense, the whole eagle thing. Yeah. Right. But because they wanted to focus on the occult theme of it, they changed it to burn, witch, burn. And that's one of the... the and that's what Tan, or, uh, uh, Flora, Flora said. says, burn, witch, burn, burn yeah. in the classroom when yeah. she's um, trying to right. do the house of cards mm-hmm. and all that. So when they did the, the British premiere of this movie, uh-huh. there was nobody in the audience except for Peter Wingard, who played Norman. Norman. And um, one uh, his actor friend Alan Bates, I think, it was just them. Norman and Bates. I know. <laughs> Why was it COVID? No, <laughs> no. Um, I don't know. They just didn't have. They, they didn't have anybody there. Like the I know the people, the actors weren't there. Like, like just those two. Like there was no uh, nobody came. Isn't huh. that strange? And then, um, but when it went to America, it played on Times Square for years. Oh, so I mean, that's like every actor's worst nightmare. I know. Right. Opening night. Nobody comes. Nobody comes. Right. Well, Peter Winger, Winger, that's his name. I think I'm pronouncing it horrible. But the guy who played Norman, um, he originally read the script and thought it was crap. Yeah. And he only took the movie because he wanted a new sports car. Uh. And he asked to be paid exactly what that sports car was priced. Isn't that funny? You know who else did that? Wanted a, wanted a car. That's the only reason why they took the role. Who? Was. Um, why does this sound familiar? <laughs> was uh, the woman who played uh, Mrs. Voorhees. Yes. Oh, my God. I just heard that on um, another po- podcast. Yeah. We both listened to it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. That's hilarious. I guess cars are yeah. things to make people movies they don't want to do i mean if you think you're like uh ah, and this is 1960 61 yeah. or 1978 yeah and you're like i want twenty five thousand, you know because i'm no, sure I, you back know. then yeah yeah that was yeah wow isn't that crazy let me go do a week's worth of work <laughs> Again, you know new car. yeah pretty awesome but yeah that's the uh, last bit of trivia i had because we kind of went through everything um, I think we should leave the next movie a secret until epi- you know episode seven, lucky number seven. Um, it'll be a surprise. All right, so we'll pick it. Okay. Off air. Off air, and yes, I uh, just want to say thank you for listening. Um, definitely, we appreciate all the shout outs that mm-hmm. we are getting and the follows and likes. Uh, please subscribe to wherever you are listening to your podcasts. And we just want to keep these coming. Uh, we really enjoy doing these. And send us a shout what we could do to make it better. Any um, suggestions or what you like, and let us know. Yeah. So the next episode is going to be a surprise. I'm excited. Yes, I know, <laughs> right? So, and yeah. we're going to drink a Bud Light. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Joking. All right, so we are all wrapping up here for episode six, Burn Witch Burn. We had a great time doing this one. Tansy! <laughs> we'll send you over to Announcer Guy, where he will give you all of the lowdown and all the information. Bye. Bye. See you later. You have been listening to the Absurd Cinema Lounge. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to subscribe to the show. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Absurd Cinema Lounge. You can contact the ladies of the lounge at Absurd Cinema Lounge at gmail.com. 
This is announcer guy asking you to remember the four words necessary to destroy the forces of the supernatural. I do not 